<clears throat> Good morning, all my Hebrews and my Shalom homies. Yes, those are real words, not really. We invented them. Page 282 in the scriptures. We are in 1 Samuel chapter 3. And we're going to do 3 and 4 this morning. And it's a pretty straightforward read. Um, so we'll just begin. And the young Samuel was serving Yahuwah before Eli. Remember, Eli is the old dude who was the priest and his sons are way out of line. And the word of Yahuwah was rare in those days. No vision was breaking forth. And it came to be in that day that Eli was lying down in his place. And his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he was unable to see. Because he was an old dude and he was losing his vision. And the lamp of Elohim had not gone out in the hakel of Yahuwah. The tabernacle of meeting. The temple, essentially. It wasn't the temple yet. It's the tabernacle of meeting. The tent of Yahuwah, where the ark of Elohim was, and Samuel was lying down to sleep, and the lamp of Elohim had not gone out. So even though at this point Eli was out of line, his sons were out of line, Phineas and Ferb, or whatever their names are, uh, they tell us here, and I cannot remember, uh, Phineas, or Pin Pinechas, and other guy, Phineas and Ferb, even though they were out of line, the lamp was still burning. The light shines into the darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Right. So there's a lot of symbolism here, that even though um, the word of Yahuwah was rare in those days, that lamp had not gone out. And we'll see that's a little bit of foreshadowing in this story here. And the lamp of Elohim had not gone out in the Hekal of Yahuwah, where the Ark of Elohim was. And Samuel was lying down to sleep. And Yahuwah called to Samuel, and he answered and said, Here I am. He then ran into Eli, Samuel, and said, Here I am. You called for me. But Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. And so Samuel went and lied down again. And Yahuwah again called and said, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But he answered and said, My son, I did not call. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know Yahuwah, and the word of Yahuwah was not yet revealed to him. And Yahuwah called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli understood that Yahuwah had called the youth. So Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he, if Yahuwah calls you, say, Speak, Yahuwah, for your servant hears. And Samuel went and lay down in his place. And Yahuwah came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. And Yahuwah said to Samuel, See, I am doing a matter in Israel, at which both ears of everyone who hears it shall tingle. In that day I shall confirm against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have declared to him that I am judging his house forever for the crookedness which he knows, because his sons cursed Elohim, and he did not rebuke them. We talked about this in uh, 1 Samuel 2. Eli failed his sons by not correcting their wicked ways and by not raising them up in the way that they should go so that they do not depart from it when they are older. And Eli's sons failed Elohim by not following his word, by being lawless, by being out of line. And so Yah, while the it was set apart from jump, it was set forth from jump, from the beginning of time, that these Levites, right, that the priesthood would pass from father to son, Yah's looking at this family going, there's no way, these people are not of me, they will not lead my people, I'm removing that from them. And so... Yah made clear in 1 Samuel 2 that he's going to destroy the bloodline of Eli because of the unrighteousness that they are exhibiting. So back to 13, 313. For I have declared to him that I am judging his house forever for the crookedness which he knows because his sons cursed Elohim and he did not rebuke them. And therefore I have sworn to the house of Eli that the crookedness of the house of Eli shall never be atoned for by slaughtering or by grain offering. They, there's nothing they can do at this point. And Samuel lay down until morning, and he opened the doors of the house of Yahuwah. And Samuel was afraid to report the vision to Eli. 
Then Eli, the old priest, called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And he said, What is the word that he, that Yahuwah spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. Elohim do so to you, and more also, if you hide a word from me of all the words that he spoke to you. He's like, man, I hope that the Father makes you as jacked up as I am if you won't share his word with me. And Samuel reported to him all the words and hid none from him. And he said, Eli said, it is Yahuwah. Let him do what is good in his eyes. He essentially says, you know what? We, we deserve this. Whatever his judgment is, we deserve it. And Samuel grew up and Yahuwah was with him and did not any let any of his words fall to the ground. That's an incredible turn of phrase right there and it just makes me wonder how many times has the father spoken to you and you just let those words fall by the wayside you didn't heed his voice i've had those times not samuel and samuel grew up and yahuwah was with him and did not let any of his words fall to the ground well as we'll see samuel's a mighty prophet the implication here for us is you want to be a mighty prophet too. Don't let his words fall to the ground. Heed the words of Yahuwah. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of Yahuwah. And Yahuwah continued to appear in Shiloh because Yahuwah revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of Yahuwah. Yeah. How do I get to know the Father better? Stay in his word, let him reveal himself to you. How do I hear the voice of the Father? Stay in his word and let him reveal himself to you. Chapter 4 Thus the word of Samuel was to all Israel, and Israel went out to battle against the Philistines, and encamped besides Ben-Hazer, while the Philistines encamped at Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in battle array against Israel, and when the battle spread, Israel was stricken by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men of the army in the field. The, the Israelites don't have the covering of Yah right now. And as we're going to see, it gets worse for them. But they don't, they don't have the covering of the Most High. If Yah be for us, who can be against us? Well, they're not for him. So he's not for them. A very important concept. Just because you claim Yah doesn't mean he claims you. <sighs> what does Messiah say in Matthew 7, 21 through 24? And many shall say to me in that day, Have we not prophesied in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and done many mighty works in your name? And truly, truly, I shall say to you, Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, for I never knew you. Just because you claim him doesn't mean he claims you. And so the Israelites are still acting as if they have the covering of Yah, but they don't. And 4,000 men are killed that day. And when the people came into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has Yahuwah smitten us today before the Philistines? Ding! Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah from Shiloh to us, so that he comes into our midst to save us from the hands of our enemies. And the people sent to Shiloh, and they brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah of hosts, dwelling between the cherubim, the cherubim, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, Phinehas and Ferb. Hophni and Phinehas were there with the Ark of the Covenant of Elohim. To these two losers, these two people who have forsaken Elohim, do they have any right to be carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the literal connection between the Father and His people into battle, as if they emit some type of righteousness and are walking in the Father's ways. No, not even a little bit. Yet again, it just proves that just because you claim Him, He doesn't claim you. Just because you are wielding the Word of Yah doesn't mean that you are in His will. We see this uh, in Matthew 4 when the enemy is tempting Messiah in the wilderness. How does he tempt him? The enemy quotes scripture chapter and verse. Just because scriptural words are falling out of somebody's face doesn't mean that they're preaching the word of the Most High. So here, they've claimed the Ark of the Covenant in hopes of having a victory in battle. That doesn't mean that the indwelt creator in the covenant has claimed them to gift them a victory in battle. 
Why? Because the condition of their heart is wrong. They're going through the motions without having their heart in the right place. And when the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah came into the camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What is the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And when they knew that the Ark of Yahuwah had come into the camp, the Philistines were afraid. For they said, Elohim has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for it has never been like this before. Woe to us, who shall deliver us from the hand of the mighty Elohim? These are the Elohim who struck the Mitzrites with all the plagues in the wilderness. Be strong and be men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. And so the Philistines are like, damn, son, they brought the ark. That is the ark of the Elohim who has destroyed lots and lots of other peoples from amongst the nations. And now we have, we've never had to face off against the Israelites with the Ark of Elohim. And it's interesting here where it says, these are the Elohim, because Elohim is plural. These are the Elohim who struck the Mitzrite with all the plagues in the wilderness. Yah and Yeshua. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord who destroys the firstborn and reaps judgment on the Egyptians and skips over his people because of the covering of the blood of the lamb. Who do you suppose that was? I'm going to go out on a limb and say, that was Yeshua. These are the Elohim. Remember that when we're told that Jesus is love. He is. And remember that we're told in Proverbs that he reproves and instructs the ones that he loves. And he destroys the ones that he doesn't. How many times does he have to say in the Gospel of John, stay in my love? Uh-huh. You read uh, Revelation 19 and you see what it looks like when Yeshua goes to war. He destroys all the nations from the earth. Everyone other than those who are Israel, his chosen people. We could see in Genesis chapter 32 that Israel are those who are striving with Elohim, those who have overcome with Elohim, and those who are ruling with Elohim. Well, I don't know about you, but that sums me up perfectly, because in certain facets of my life, I'm still striving with him. In other facets of my life, I have overcome with Elohim, Yeshua. And in other facets of my life, I am ruling with Elohim. Remember, the Adamic covenant is to rule and subdue. That's why man was made in the first place, to rule and subdue this earth. We are Israel. Those that claim Yeshua as Messiah and do our best to walk in the Father's commands and do the convictions of our heart, we are Israel. So the Elohim who struck the Mitzrites with all the plagues of the wilderness, they're like, we are fixing to see some annihilation, and we don't want to be on the receiving end of that. Be strong and be men, you Philistines, that you do not become servants of the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Be men and fight. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten, and every man fled to his tent. And the slaughter was very great, and there fell of Israel 30,000 foot soldiers. And the ark of Elohim was captured, and the two sons of Eli died, Hophni and Pinchas. And a man, well, hold on. They lose the ark, and they're slaughtered in battle. If Yah be for us, who can be against us? Well, we can tell just from the outcome here that Yah was not for them. Why? They were not for Yah. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, for I never knew you. What does it say in the renewed covenant in Hebrews 8, verse 6? For they did not... Well, let's just go. Let's just go. Hebrews 8, verse 6. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Mitzrayim, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, 
says Yahuwah. That's the scariest place in the world to be, if you ask me, is disregarded by Yah. You think you've got the covering. You think you've got the creator of the universe on your side because you've just been going through the motions. You don't have anything. And you're going to get slaughtered. And you're going to lose the physical embodiment of the Father in your life. Because going through the motions doesn't cut it. This is exactly what Yeshua rails against with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the scribes and the high priests. Y'all have made a religion out of my Father's perfect word and are going through the motions. And I have come to earth to be the embodiment of righteousness, to complete the Torah and the prophets, to walk it out for you so that you might see what it is that you are to do, to not simply be box checkers and going through the motions. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, for I never knew you. And a man of Benjamin ran from the battle line that same day and came to Shiloh with his garment torn and dirt on his head. And he came in and saw Eli sitting on a seat by the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the Ark of Elohim. Eli knew what was up. He knew that the Ark was gone. And his heart was trembling. Now the implication here is that his sons took it. And Eli did not rebuke them. Eli, his sons have been messing up bad to this point. But Eli, whether it's because he was just old and feeble. Or didn't have the heart, the conviction to say, no kids, don't do that. His kids, his sons, took the Ark of the Covenant. Can you get more disobedient than that? And Eli, yet again, refuses to reprove them. He doesn't stand up to them. And so his heart is trembling. And the man came into the city and reported, and all the city cried out. And Eli heard the noise of the outcry and said, What is the noise of this uproar? And the man came hastily and informed Eli. Now Eli was 98 years old, and his eyes were so dim that he was unable to see. And the man said to Eli, I am he who came from the battle, and I fled today from the battle line. And he said, what, is, what was the matter, my son? Eli asked him, he's like, so what's up? And the messenger answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has been a great slaughter among the people. And your two sons have died, Hophni and Pinius, and the ark of the Elohim has been captured. And it came to be, when he made mention of the Ark of Elohim, that Eli fell off the seat backwards by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. For the man was old and heavy, and he ruled Israel forty years. And his daughter-in-law, Pinius's wife, was pregnant, about to bear. And when she heard the news that the Ark of Elohim was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself and gave birth because her pains came upon her. She went into labor, which is, this happens. Uh, it's a fairly common thing. When you're that far along and you receive traumatic news, the emotion is so strong that you go into labor. And about the time of her death, so she dies in childbirth, the woman who stood by her said, Do not fear, for you have borne a son. But she did not answer, nor did she set her heart to it. And she called the child Ichabod, saying, The esteem, the glory, has departed from Israel, because the ark of Elohim was taken, and because her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The esteem has departed from Israel, for the ark of Elohim was taken. So, Yah, Father God being trustworthy and true in his word, did destroy the lineage of Eli. We've got Ichabod, but Eli and his sons are gone. His daughter-in-law is gone. The ark is gone. And Israel is stricken with woe. Sometimes the Father's got to remove everything from you for you to realize just how far off the path you are so that you can have the perspective to truly repent, have a true repentance of the heart. 
and turn back to him so that you might experience his presence again with a willingness of the heart rather than just going through the motions. <sighs> For I knew not sin but by the law. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness, for I never knew you. Shalom, y'all.